Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari ST A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari ST games, some which I grew up with, and some which are new to me. Today is one of the former. Today we're looking at Lemmings, which was a 1991 release by DMA Design and published by Cygnosis. DMA Design, if you're not familiar, would go on to become Rockstar North, who are now very famous for the Grand Theft Auto series. So Lemmings was one of the most critically well-received and popular games of the early 90s. It sold a ridiculous number of copies over its lifetime. Part of that is due to the fact that it got ported to pretty much every platform under the sun, but it was also incredibly popular. It's one of the sort of must-have games of the early 90s. So Lemming's original inspiration came about as part of some development experimentation for DMA's game Walker, uh, which was originally going to be a sequel to their shoot 'em up Blood Money, but ultimately became its own thing. And uh, as part of that development experiment, uh, they designed an 8x8 pixel character sprite that was animated and they all fiddled around with it. And someone on the team decided that there was a game in that, in just that little, tiny little sprite. Um, and so, yeah, that became Lemmings. Uh, initially, because that little 8x8 sprite was known sort of colloquially around the offices of Lemming, and then sort of the concept came from there, generally. So the game had several different level designers, and each of those level designers had their own distinct character for how they approached designing levels. So some made pop culture references, some put visible cues around the level, and some made sort of really fiendish puzzles. And the idea behind Lemmings, if you've never come across it before, which I find hard to believe, but if in the off chance you've never come across Lemmings before, you have a bunch of Lemmings who come into the level through a trapdoor, and an exit, and you have to get them to the exit. But you don't have direct control over them. They just move using some very simple rules. So uh, they walk off things, as lemmings are wont to do. Um, they keep walking until they hit something, at which point they turn around, and so on. And so your main interaction with the game is uh, clicking on these various icons and giving them special abilities. So they might be able to float a long distance. They might be able to build a bridge. They might be able to dig through something. Um, and yeah, this was an, a completely new concept in puzzle gaming at the time, um, and hasn't really been seen in the same way since, I don't think, apart from numerous more recent ports of Lemmings and uh, some atrocious mobile versions, if I remember correctly. But anyway, uh, yeah, another noteworthy thing about this game is the original Amiga version was originally intended to use samples of copyrighted music, but uh, Cygnosis, quite rightly, objected to that. And that led to the game's now iconic use of both classical and traditional themes in there, uh, which is something that was very popular in the 8-bit era anyway. But also in the 8-bit era, era uh, you would hear um, sort of takes on copyrighted music as well, because... Um, yeah, it's, it's not like today, sort of, people weren't really paying attention to the video game space in terms of music and so on, so there wasn't any such thing as licensed music in video games. People would just think, oh, I like the sound of that, and they put it in the game. But around the 16-bit era, companies were becoming a little bit more aware of copyright and uh, wanting to play it a bit more safe. And so that's why Lemmings uh, started taking on some of its more iconic uh, pieces of music because they were public domain pieces being classical tunes or traditional tunes. All right, I've got a box copy of Lemmings. Here it is. It's one of Cygnosis' lovely big box releases in this delightful glossy box. There's the back there. Gives you a good idea of what it's all about. A unique, mind-boggling game of multiple skill levels. Take command of the wackiest collection of misdirected rodents ever seen on your screen. And then there's a bunch of quotes from reviews at the time, um, which should give you an idea of how well received this was um, when it was released. So Alan Greenberg from Computer Gaming World said, Not since Tetris has this reviewer been so addicted to or completely fascinated with a series of challenging puzzles. For those who enjoy fast-moving jousts of logic and creativity, follow the crowd and get lemmings. Uh, the one ninety six percent said it was set to be the most set to become the most talked about form of computer entertainment ever. Uh, Tom Malcolm from Info Magazine said that dealers nearly had to be physically torn away from the computers. It was the most original arcade game I've seen in ages. The graphics are admirable, the sound perfect. Don't miss it. All right, let's have a look inside. So, like most Cygnosis games of the era, this outer bit is a slipcase. And then inside we've got this standard um, Cygnosis thing. Let me see my phone screen in there. That's nice, isn't it? Um, yeah. So it comes on just one disc. And we've got a manual, which is fairly sort of standard practice for um, 
Psygnosis. Their manuals were kind of underwhelming in most cases. Um, although in this case, they've actually got some color artwork in there, which is sort of a step up from a lot of other Psygnosis stuff. So that's quite nice. And it goes into a lot of detail about how all the different uh, types of lemmings work and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so like I was saying here, it, it tells you how, sort of how the structure of the game works. These are all the different abilities you can give to your lemmings in this one. Later games in the lemming series sort of made things much more complicated with things like lemmings to the tribes. So they had different groups of um, uh, lemmings who each had their own unique abilities and so on. But for a lot of people, uh, this first one is sort of the, the lemmings experienced distilled down to its purest form, if you like. So yeah, well, let's go play lemmings. Okay, here we are with Lemmings for the Atari ST. One of many, many, many ports of this game for various platforms. Um, and the version I grew up playing. So, we start the game with this lovely animated intro sequence. Around this sort of era, um, Psygnosis games were quite well known for having high quality animated intros. So some of them with sort of traditional animation like this. Um, and quite a few of them used uh, pre-rendered stuff as well so it was quite fashionable to use uh, sort of silicon graphics workstations I think with the, the sort of big powerful computers at the time um, but yeah this this was obviously animated with sort of traditional sprite techniques and so on but the, the smoothness and the slickness of the animation on those lemming sprites there is just gorgeous And in fact, um, the animation in the game is great as well. Although, as we said in the intro, the lemming sprites themselves are just 8 pixels by 8 pixels, which is teeny tiny. And then a bit of fake scaling to give us the logo. And a quick bit of loading. And then we're into the game proper. Now, I haven't played Lemmings for a very long time, and I was never very good at it back in the day either, so we're just going to start with some of the easy levels today and see how we get on. Because the easy levels are designed to sort of introduce you to the different types of Lemmings one at a time. And, um, yeah, there you go. So, on this title screen here, you can choose between one player and two player. Uh, on the Amiga version, you could play with two mice, um, but the Atari ST doesn't support two mice connected at the same time, so one player has to use a joystick on that one. New level, I think, allows you to enter a password. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so we'll leave that for now. Incorrect code. Yes, oddly enough, pressing escape by itself is incorrect code. And here you can choose between having the sound effects or the music. And the music is much better than the sound effects in this, so... Now, Lemmings became pretty well known for having... Um, various digitized speech samples which sadly are not present in the Atari ST version um, yeah you've, you've just got music or you've got some fairly pathetic sound effects so it's it's normally best to just keep the music on because the music is really catchy and nicely composed so and then last of all you've got this little thing over here which is the four difficulty levels now rather than just being a difficulty level for the same levels it's actually four different sets of levels full stop so um yeah you, you just work your way through those one at a time or you can start straight from the more difficult ones if you want to all right one player let's begin from the beginning so level one just dig number of learnings 10 10 percent of them to be saved release rate 50 time five minutes and rating is fun Okay, so on this level, all we've got are the diggers. So we click on the diggers, and we dig. And wait for them to dig. And they will keep digging until they break through, I think. There we go. And then they'll just wander off, eventually heading towards the exit. So you can turn up this thing over here. This increases the release rate of the lemmings. So they'll come through the trapdoor more quickly. As it happens, we've already got all of them ready to go. Alright, easy enough. All lemmings accounted for. You needed 10%, you rescued 100%. You rescued every lemming on that level. Can you do it again? 
and then here every level has its own passcode that you can write down so it's not a case if you have to get a certain distance in order to unlock a password you you just get a password for every level which is very nice so you can pick up where you left off without having to worry about save games and having a formatted floppy disk and that sort of thing only floaters can survive this all right so in this case we need to give the floater ability to every lemming And that will allow us to float down on the umbrella and survive the fall. Because otherwise they will die from a drop of that height. There we go, done. Easy peasy. These, these early levels are designed to be incredibly easy. Like I say, they're designed to introduce you to the... Um, the different abilities one at a time so in the case of this one you assign blockers to make sure they don't walk off a platform they shouldn't I'll pop on there pop on there and one here And then one last one, just here. And meanwhile, we just increase the pace. So you see they come through the trapdoor much more quickly then. Now the important thing to note about blockers is um, under most circumstances, they won't make it. Um, because once they're blockers, you, you can't make them not block us anymore by any means other than digging out from underneath them. Um, and we have no means of doing that here. So, as you'll see, once all the other lemmings are gone... We need to use the famous nuke button. You double click on this. And they will count down. And then explode! So that's also the button you use if you mess up a level. Um, that always used to bug me a little bit as a, as a kid because it meant the, it was impossible to clear every level with 100% lemmings because there's, there's, there's levels like that that you have to blow up some of the lemmings. Um, but yeah, it's just the way it was designed. So now use miners and climbers. So this one we have to save all of them. So miners dig diagonally like this and again they'll keep going until they break through and then we need to make all of them into climbers which means that they can scale vertical walls And there we go, done. So you can see how this works. So as you progress through the game, it gets more and more complicated and you have to mix more different lemming abilities together. So like that one, we, we had to mix together uh, the miner to get into the lower section and then the climber to climb up the thing so pretty straightforward for now this one we have 50 bashers at our disposal and they dig horizontally Now this one is a little bit more awkward because of this kind of mesh thing you've got going on here. This is actually quite tricky to dig through, so... Because of the way it's constructed, so... As you can see... 
you end up sort of uh, <laughs> making little holes in it rather than actually digging through it. That's what we want. We want a nice clean path dug through it like that. And now we've pretty much resolved that. We can up the release rate and then we wait. There is no fast forward function in this day, so the, the most you can do to speed up a level is to increase that rate there at which they're released. So you can't then just let the lemmings come through and you put it on fast forward. You've got to wait for them to, to finish. So that's presumably to do with the time limit, but I mean, there's no reason why they couldn't have put a fast forward feature in and sort of also fast forwarded the time limit as well, but. Well, it is what it is. This game was absolutely unique at the time it was originally released. And so it was one of those things where... It was sort of establishing good conventions for... The, I say this sort of game. There hadn't really been a lot of games quite like Lemmings ever since the original Lemmings, because I think a lot of people ended up being very worried about um, being labelled as a Lemmings clone. All right, so the way this one works, you set a blocker, and then you have to deliberately blow him up. in order to break through the wall. So we do the same here. Well, that one actually managed to make it through the wall by uh, happy coincidence, I guess. <laughs> and here come the rest of them. When I think of the sound of the ST sound chip, this is one of the games I always think of. It's because the music in this game, it, it, it's just the sort of quintessential ST music. And that poor old Yamaha sound chip, it wasn't amazing, but it, it did the job. And it's one of those things that I've come to like a lot more these days than I did back in the day. So like back in the day, I was always sort of very envious of my friends who had an Amiga because the Amiga was technologically superior to the Atari ST in most regards. So it was better at scrolling, it was better at, uh, at sound, for certain things anyway. So now we're using builders. They construct these diagonal platforms like this. But they only have a limited amount of bricks they can use to build their structure. Now we've got some slightly tricky business here with this pit. So what we can do to ensure that no one falls in is just keep adding builders to the mix until at least one of them is over, so none of them fall in the pit. Your alternative there is you have to actually build some bridges out of the pit, which is quite difficult to do in that confined space. And among other things, you'll see this level teaches you that lemmings can climb up um, sort of single brick height steps like that. Always worth noting. So the, the fun difficulty level is actually a very good example of kind of an interactive tutorial basically. It's not being explicit about anything though. It's just, it's teaching you how to play the game by just letting you play it. Using a limited subset of the tools that are available to you in the full game of course, but yeah, it's learn through doing. It's a very sort of Nintendo approach. Modern Nintendo is, is all about 
teaching you how to play a game by just allowing you to um, to just do it basically not as complicated as it looks all right let's just pause for a sec okay so they're gonna fall out here and they're gonna go that way so actually all we need to do is get a blocker and turn them around now you'll notice that it's given you 20 of everything in this one just to try and intimidate you so what this level is teaching you is that it's not always a case of having to use everything that's provided to you sometimes you just have to use one thing And off you go, poor fellow. Okay, onwards. As long as you try your best. Alright, let's just pause quickly. So this one, we just need to dig through this middle bit here. But the twist we've got in this one is this thing here, which is a trap that will kill the lemmings if they come too close to it. So what we need to do is set off a basher doing his job and then as soon as someone comes through here we need a blocker. So yeah, so we see one of them got caught in there. But with the speed that they're coming through, because they're coming through at speed 99 by default on this one, it's very difficult not to lose one of them in that way. And that's why the level's called Just Try Your Best. Yeah, there's some really nice game design going on in here that I could recognise when I was a kid. I could recognise how this this game gives you a really nice sense of achievement as you're progressing through these early levels, even though they're very, very simple and straightforward. Uh, but it's also teaching you all the skills you'll need to learn and get through the rest of the game. Right, what do we want to do here? I guess we probably want some floaters. Uh oh, we're losing some. Curse my inaccurate clicking. The nice thing is the fact you've got all those tools available to you means that there's various alternative solutions available as well. So there's probably a different way I could have done that. Is there a keyboard shortcut for selecting the different things. I thought there was. Apparently not. Alright, on to level 11. Doing well. I forget how many levels there are in each um, each tier. Right, in this one, we need to send two dudes over. And probably make them floaters as well. Now you see that when they're a climber and a floater, they become an athlete. So there are sort of certain hybrid classes that they can do. Now the reason I've done that is you'll see the bouncing arrows on the block here. They mean you can only dig through it in that direction. So we had to send someone through to the other side in order to be able to actually clear a path for everyone else. 
It's all about cooperating for the greater good. So he's now busily going to climb all the way up to the ceiling there and then drop back down using his umbrella and he'll be fine he's just going to take his time about it to level 12 patience 80 lemmings 50% to be saved release rate 99 okay I'm just going to pause that briefly right so we're probably going to have to dig through there and build a bridge out of the pit All right, well, let's see what happens. This might be our first actual challenge. You see here that part of the challenge in Lemmings comes from being able to accurately click on stuff when there's a million of the little buggers all in one place. And one that's facing the right direction, but to the point. Often a lot more difficult than it sounds, but I think we nailed it that time. And we can blow Chappy up. There we go. I always used to love seeing them in a big, kind of coherent lump like that, because it was just really satisfying when they all went through the door at the same time. Nice. Level 13. We all fall down. Okay, so our only real option on this one is digging. So I guess that's what we'll have to do. I think the twist in this one is if they if they dug through the platform, then it's not quite far enough for them to fall to die. Whereas if you just let them walk off the end, they will die because that is too far. Yeah, there we go. So this one, it's about giving you a, a better understanding of some of the basic mechanics on which the game is built. Oh, yeah, we lost one there. Inaccuracy costs us a couple there, but other than that, all good. You need a you need a hundred percent of that one. All right, try again.
Okay, so all we need to do on this one is we need to be a bit further along before we start giving the digger roll. Because the problem there is we were getting a bit low on space. So I was leaving it a bit late to actually activate them. And that led to them falling to their untimely demise. So we just let them get a bit closer to the edge of this platform here. much better. Need to find a bit of time in there to scroll as well. So you've actually still got some screen space to work with. All right, we're good. Good fella. All right, level 14. I have a feeling there's 16 in each tier, but uh, I could be wrong. We'll see. Origins and lemmings. 80 lemmings, 75% to be saved. Okay. This is basically a, a lot of bashing and bridge building, I think. I'm going to mine rather than bash. just to make sure they're not falling too far. And if we start the bridge here... That means he has three more bricks before he finishes building. Alright, there we go, and then dig through there. drums. Disgraceful behaviour from the ST sound chip. I discovered recently, I mean I've known for a while that that's the same sound chip that was in I think the Sega Master System, uh, but I also learned recently that it was the same sound chip in the Spectrum Plus 3, I think, or the 128 Spectrum or something like that. Certainly one of the, the later model Spectrums that could do a bit more has the same sound chip as the Atari ST which makes me laugh just because of how fiercely um, kind of territorial Atari owners got about how much better their computers were than Crappy Door and Spec Trash and that sort of thing and then they go and have the same sound chip as uh... well in this case it's a 16-bit computer having the same sound chip as an 8-bit computer <laughs> so Make of that what you will. Right, and now we wait. And wait some more. Here they come.
Good job, everybody. Level 15. Don't let your eyes deceive you. Okay, so what's going on here? Hmm. Alright, I think what we probably want to do here, because we've got eight minutes, which is plenty of time, is turn this chap into an athlete and get him to go and sort everything out before we do anything else. Because otherwise we'll lose a bunch of lemmings. So, they'll all stay contained in that little area to begin with. This guy, meanwhile, will float down here. In fact, he can bash through these ones, as long as he doesn't bash through the first one, that's fine. This music is ridiculous. It's our little town of Bethlehem mixed with um, Whatever that Wild West song is, I don't know what it's actually called. I've never known. It's just the annoying one that people bust out anytime anything even vaguely Wild West appears on screen and they think it's hilarious. You keep building, sir. You've got an important job to do. Just a little bit more. Love the animations of the lemmings, they're just so good. Like just the sheer number of frames of animation on them. When they're that tiny. I mean they've probably got that many frames of animation because they're that tiny, but you know. I'm not going to complain. Alright, keep going, and then I think we can bust through the rest of them now. There we go. Now, assuming he did his job right. And as long as that fall isn't too far, which I hope it isn't, I don't think it is, we should be all good. Again, this thing down here, this is another trap, so if the lemmings wandered into that, they would die, so don't do that. Although I remember sort of uh, one thing a lot of people quoted as quite an appealing part of this game when it first came out was the variety of fairly gruesome animations they were for the lemmings when they got caught in traps and things. So there's a lot of care and attention to detail put into this. There's probably something interesting and mathematical going on with how they've grouped themselves into sets of six like they have here. But then I think we've got a big lump at the end there, haven't we? Yeah, there we go. Another flawless victory! Alright, level 16. Don't do anything too hasty. Alright, 
Uh, I think probably what we want is to let one guy through. Block off the rest. Get him to start building. Get him to block that off there. And just keep building. Building a literal stairway to heaven. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> You can actually apply the builder job to him again before he finishes building. Um, that just resets his brick counter. It doesn't add them on to the number he's got left. So if you're not careful, you can end up wasting your abilities if you're not careful. Oh, no! All right, Newcomb, start again. This is the other use of the nuke button. If you fuck up and you want to start again. Right, I had the right idea there. I, I, I thought, rock bottom, I hope for your sake that you nuke that level. Yes, I did. Right, let's try that again. So, get the blocker ready. Up him there. Start him building. Get him to block. So I found this game quite interesting when I was a kid. And, and now, in fact. Because... It was a puzzle game in which you had a certain amount of freedom to be creative. So yes, there were sort of optimal ways to finish a level and ways that the design has obviously intended you to finish the level. But also, more often than not, you would have enough tools available to you to experiment and try some strange things. Try some unconventional ways to solve a level. And I always found that really interesting and a really enjoyable part of this game. It was just sort of feeling like the developers trusted you to play with what they'd given you and enjoy yourself. It's not about playing optimally, unless you want it to be. It's not about being correct, unless you want it to be. It's just about having a set of rules with regard to how things work. And then being able to experiment with those rules. So it's sort of a very early example of what we'd now know as a sandbox game, I guess. Only unlike a lot of modern sandbox games, this has a lot more in the way of structure. So you still have levels to complete, you still have puzzles to solve. It's just the way you go about solving those puzzles is, um, yeah, different. Ooh, level 17. Okay, so there's more than 16 levels in fun. Easy when you know how. Okay, hold it there, please. Right, so we can't dig down here because you can't dig through metal. 
What we can do, however, is... bash through these walls. Oh no! They're all getting squished! Okay. So you don't want to go the bottom route, because they'll die! So I suspect easy when you know how it refers to going right instead of left. So I only need to save 40% of them in this one. Oh crap. Start again. Right, we need a blocker. Block of that. New bash through there. I hope that fall isn't too long. I have a sneaking suspicion it will be. In which case, I have another idea already. Yep. Okay, something else. Right again, we'll get it this time. Right, I think what we want to do is this. Nope, not that. Hmm. Actually mildly stumped. I feel like I'm on the right track there. I'm just curious as to how many of those squishy things there are. I suspect that they will appear at regular intervals. Oh no. Oh no, there's another one there. There'll probably be another one along here. Yep, right there. Alright, so having set that up, he's going to die. But the rest of them... Oh, there's another bloody one there.
Right, well, as long as we can get enough building over that last one, which I guess will be around here somewhere. There we go, sorted. Is that enough? Because we lost quite a few along the way, admittedly. Oh, we've done it, I think. We only need 40%, I think. Alright, Peachy. Level 18. I will stop in a minute. I am quite enjoying myself, though. <laughs> it's block and blow. Alright, so in this one, we want to carefully position our blockers so that we don't go on fire. So we'll pop one here. And then blow him up. And pop another one there. And blow him up. And we want another one there. And blow him up. Here. I don't want to blow that one up because he would uh, leave a hole in the wall, which they would w then walk through and catch fire. And we don't want that, do we? We can blow him up now, however, because he's served his purpose all right and we're good I'm sure we'll come to this at some point but there was a um, expansion pack to lemmings called oh no more lemmings and the music on that was considerably superior to the stuff in the original version here. I don't know if they had a different composer or not, but um, yeah, it was, it was a lot better than the music in this. I mean, the music in this version has its definite charms, obviously, but um, yeah, in the uh, in Ono Ball Limix, it was just just a little bit better composed. All right, what we got here. Okay, we're just going to need to build a big bridge up there. So this should be pretty straightforward. Famous last words. Alright, so if we pop a blocker there. And another one here, just to keep him contained. We'll make this the last level. We'll be going for 50 minutes. <laughs> I haven't played this for a long time. I used to spend hours playing it as a kid though, even though I couldn't get that far into the more challenging difficulty levels. All right, let's build. Might have started this quite slightly too late. Oh, we might be all right. Yeah, I think we're good. Got just the right angle. All right, I think 
One more should do it, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. Alright. And now we can release the little buggers over here. And pump up the volume. That's still a satisfying sight, just that whole string of lemmings where they're so tightly packed together that they're indistinguishable from each other. I don't know, is this just something really pleasing about that to me? There you go. Alright, great job folks. Alright, I think we'll hold that there for today. Um, that's 19 levels of Lemmings. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed myself though. Still a great game. Still a great game. Um, yeah, there's, there's obviously little bits and pieces of it that uh, sort of have aged better than others. Um, particularly with regard to the control system. But yeah, it's still an enjoyable game. Still still an all-time classic that's well worth exploring. If, especially if you've never experienced it before yourself. So, Lemmings for the Atari ST. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. Check out Atari A to Z .wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects, moegamer.net, where I explore Japanese and Japanese-inspired games from yesterday and today, and videopackgames.wordpress.com, which aims to catalogue the small but well-formed library of the Philips G7000 video pack computer, also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon, or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.